open. So let me start to share my screen. So you guys can see my screen right now, right? Cool. So let's start our topic today. So this is our fifth day, I think. Yeah. So um, we talked about a lot of stuff uh, during our first four days. So we are going to talk about equations for day five. And uh, I think I can skip this part <laughs> because I think most of you are already familiar with me. So we can move directly to today's topic, which is equations. So here are some basic components for equations. So the first one is indeterminate. As you can see that um, the x, right? So this is the indeterminate. And also you will need an equal sign to make it to be an equation, right? So uh, let's try to figure out how to solve the equations. So if you remember, uh, we talked about the polynomials. So what we are going to do firstly for a poly polynomial is to simplify it to its standard form. So actually you can see here, we got the left side as a polynomial and the right side as another poly polynomial. So we are going to separate the left side and the right side of this equal sign. And we are going to do them separately. So firstly, let's do the left side. So we are going to simplify to a standard form, right? So what we are going to do here would be, we got one fifth and we put that X out of the parent brace, right? And we got this three to five, okay? And we got a minus one, right? And which is equals to one to 10 X. All right, then we are going to like trying to move the right side to the left side. So what we can get here would be this one and, um, and okay, that's it. So for this um, polynomial, uh, we got only one indeterminate. So we can directly uh, combine them together, which made it to be, let me see, we got one fifth and one tenth. We minus it, that would be one tenth. And we got three to five and we got one. So that would be um, okay. All right. Then it goes to be. Zero. So, see, it's trying to move it this way, right? And as you can remember here, what we can do is to write it in this way so that we can crop them, right? So, 5x is equal to 80. Right? So, x is equal to that would be. 16. Yeah. Okay. So we solve the first one. So basically, you can see that is how we do. How should we do step by step to solve the equations? All right. So this is a very simple one. Let's move on to our next one, which is about a system of linear equations. So as you can see, the name here, which made it a system, that means you've got um, like more than one equations to make it a system. Right? Another stuff is because it is linear. So for each indeterminate, you've got actually like the powers should be to the power of one. So that means it is a linear one. And uh, you got like at least for more than two indeterminates, that is the reason why you um, made it as a system. Okay, so let's try to see um, how should we solve this one. Okay, so if we're going to do this one, we are going to try to figure out some method. The first method we are going to introduce is the substitution method. So for the substitution method, you are going to 
substitute one of the indeterminates in terms of the other one. So for example, we got X and Y here as our indeterminates. That means we can try to represent X in the form of Y. So how should we do that? So let's mark it down as first one. This is the second one. So what we can do is trying to like make this one be simplified. So what we can do is to like um, multiply by three for both of the side. So that would make it to be this form. Okay. And then we are going to put, you can see here X is equal to this stuff, right? So we are going to use this polynomial to represent X. So let's try to put that into the two. So if we are going to put it into our equation number two, it will make it be, and yes, which is equal to minus three. Okay, so right now what we're going to do is to simplify the left side of the polynomial. So we got, this stuff here, right? And uh, we are going to move this minus three from the right side to the left side. So we can do this quickly. And what we got is actually three y plus nine is equal to zero. That means three y is equal to minus nine. So that means y should be equal to three. Okay, if y is equal to three, we can finally move to here, which made it x be minus two, up by three, plus three, that is minus three. Okay, so what we can write down here as x is equal to minus three, and y is equal to three. Okay. So that is for our substitution method. Let's move on to see are there any other method that we can do to solve the system of linear equations. So our next one would be elimination method. So for elimination method, you should like take a close look of the system is there because you can notice that this one is totally different from our previous, session, uh, previous question. For our question two, you can notice that there is, hmm, it looks like that there are no um, very significant thing that you can notice, right? But here you can see that, oh, for both uh, equation number one and equation number two, we got the left side as um, some x plus some y and the right side are both numbers. So you can see there looks like very similar, right? So if that is the stuff, you can think about like, hmm. So for example, we got seven and six on the right side. If we like write it down as seven minus six, which is equal to one, right? So right now we know that there is something, a polynomial here, which is equal to seven. And this one here, we got another polynomial, which is equal to six. So we can actually directly eliminate them. So what we can do is to write it down as equation number two minus equation number one. So what we can get from here is 3x plus 4y and we minus it to 2x plus 3y. And that is one. So that is what we can do for this one, right? Okay. So if we are doing this way, we are again going to simplify the polynomials. So if we are going to simplify our polynomials here, we can get, let me see, we got one X, oops, we got one X left and we got seven Y, right? We got, um, no, not seven Y because this is within the parent race. That is Y, okay. The final result we can get from this one, which is x plus y, 1. So 
Right now, what we can do is trying to wrap her then. Okay, all right. So, um, again, remember, please mute yourself during the recording. Go. Go okay. And let's write it down as x in the form of y. So now would be x is equal to one minus y. So then we can again do the same thing as we did for the question number two. We're trying to put this form in terms of x into the where either of them works for this time. So let's try to say like making things to be easy. Let's try to put them into equation one. So for equation one, now we get two y minus y plus three y is equal to six. So that'll be Okay, and let me try to calculate it. So y should be equal to four. Okay, so then if, if y is equal to four, we can try to put it into the x. So x should be equal to one minus y, which is four, which is equal to minus three. Okay, so we can directly write it down as this form. Are we finished? <laughs> okay. So if you are like thought about that you have finished it, you can try to um, pause yourself because you can think about you just put that one minus y into the first equation. You didn't check the second equation, right? So you need to make sure to verify your result works also for the second equation. So let's try to verify it. So we're fine. What we can do is we're trying to put our results for both x and y into the second equation. So mark it down. This is the second one. So four, four. So what is that? We got minus nine plus uh, sixteen, which is equal to seven. So correct. So we finish this step of verify. That means our final result here is correct. Okay. So let's move on to some more complicated questions. Now, for these kind of complicated questions, you are going to think about that. So for example, here, you got the coefficient as these kind of really large, large numbers, right? So Wow, what, can, what you can do is to think about that if I'm still going to use the substitution method, it will be really complicated to do the operation. So you will think about the elimination method for this time. So you can see for this question, oh, it's cool because the right side of both numbers and for the left side, you got some x plus some y. So it is pretty clear that you should use the elimination method for this time. So let's go into do this one together. If we are going to use the elimination method again, um, so we can see that the right side of um, equation number two is larger than the right side of the equation number one. So what we can do is to write it down in this form, two minus one. So that would be 2022x plus 2021y minus 2021x and 2020y, which is equal to one, right? Okay, so let's try to um, put them out. We got this stuff of x here. This is the x, so that is one x left, right? And then what about the y? Here is a y, here's another y which is minus symbol, right? So that would be um, hmm, minus y. So yeah, we got it here for the left side and this is the right side. So we can write x in terms of y, which is this form, right? 
Okay, now again, let's put them back into one of our equation. Let's say probably put into the equation number one. I'm always doing that for the first one because so that I can check it for the second one. Okay, so for number one, let's write that as number one. We got this form, which is equal to wow, 6064. Okay, so let's try to separate them out, which we can make it as this one and this one, and which is equal to this stuff here. So let's add those y together. So for the y, we got actually that would be 4043, right? And for the right side, we're going to use the 6064 to minus. 2021, which is equal to, aha, uh -huh. so 4043. That means y is equal to 1. So if y is equal to 1, that means x would be 1 plus y, which is 2. Okay, so do we get any answer as x is equal to 2? y is equal to 1? We got c, right? So it looks like we are finished, but again, don't forget to verify it. And you can write down as the second one. So we are going to verify this and which is equal to, and that will be, so correct. Okay, so that is this, one last step you need to do, you always need to verify it because you want to make sure that you don't make any mistake when you are doing the operations. Okay, now let's move on to the next question, question number five. So for question number five, actually you can see, uh, so how many indeterminates here? Two, right? Of course, you are going to solve them, right? <laughs> the first one is X and the second one is Y, but hello. If you're going to like to do for the X and Y, you're going to like make, uh, you at least you need to simplify the polynomials on the left side for both of the equations and also for the right side for both of, both sides of the equations. That'd be really time costly, right? So you also, again, you take a very close look to the uh, equations here and you find some paraphrase here so for this stuff inside, which is x plus y. And for this paraphrase here, what inside is x minus y, right? So you can think about that. Okay, okay. Let me try to imagine that this side in this stuff inside the paraphrase will be a whole body. We take it as a single indeterminate. So now let's mark it down as one and two. And let's do it trying to solve them. So for one, let's try to say we got um, three x plus y. So again, this is a whole body, right? We don't want to separate them out. And this is, right? And that is equal to minus seven. So this is our new um, equation number one. So because this is our new equation number one, we're going to mm, erase it. Okay, for our equation number two, let's say um, we got this stuff here. We don't need to do anything. We also don't need to change anything for this part, but we want to move this stuff to the right side. This is our new equation number two. Let's erase the old one, okay? So now you can think, see that, okay, um, it looks in a very similar format. So what you can do is to, again, do this stuff, right? And what you can get from here is cross them, and you got two, this paraphrase as whole body, which is equal to hmm, two. So that means x plus y as a whole body, is one. 
So now you get how to um, have the relationship between X and Y, and then you're going to represent X in the form of Y, right? Okay, so now let's try to do the similar stuff. Let's try to put this stuff back to the equation number one. So for equation number one, right now you've got three, aha, one minus Y, and you've got another Y, and you get two, which is also, you've got one minus y to represent x. This is minus y, okay? And this is minus seven. So actually, oops, you don't need them anymore. And oops, what happened? Okay, don't worry. And this is three, mm -hmm. this stuff inside would be a a little bit hard to do, but let's try to um, follow them step by step. So this would be this stuff. Okay, so one more step to do it. So we got, hmm, cool. Almost down, almost down. So let's say we got four Y, this is one, right? This is um, minus seven. So we move one to this side and which turn it to be 4y, which is, which is equal to minus eight. Hmm. So y would be equal to minus two. Oops, okay. So now that we got our y, we can write it as x is equal to one minus minus two. <laughs> That is three. Okay, so we can write it down as this one and this one. Okay, and also don't forget to check whether you get this answer correctly. So again, let's try to verify it. So for the next one, we got five, three, and this is minus two, got two, x is three, this is minus two, would be in this form. So this would be, this would be minus y, right? So correct, we verify it again, and we got it correctly again. So let me, uh, oh, okay, I see someone type in the chat box, you can represent x plus y as z and x plus as minus y as w, removes confusion. Yes, of course, you can do it if you, uh, if you are more familiar with, uh, you, you are more like comfortable to do so. So for me, personally, for me, I can treat x plus y as a single stuff, but for um, if you are not so comfortable to do so, you can also represent x plus y in another letter. You pick it A, <laughs> that's totally fine. Uh, you can also pick some other like M, W, whatever you want. So you can also like put in, in this way. This is also works. So um, it will be more easy for you to follow, but also remember uh, you got some new equations here, right? So don't, forgot to check them after you solve your um, equations. Okay, I think it's almost the time, but we still got some questions need to solve. So please hold on for some time and let's finish them together. So let's mark it down one, two, three here for this question. So the reason we are going to talk about this question is because you can notice that for equation number one, you've got x plus y, right? You've got x and y as indeterminates. For, question, uh, for equations two, you've got y and z. For equation number three, you've got x and b. Wow, you are thinking about, it seems, some, seems that um, there is no equations that can combine all of the x and y and b together. So you're thinking that, okay, what I'm going to do is trying to create a new one, right? So, oh, I see someone is raising your hand. Um, if you've got some questions, you can type that in the chat box so that I can see them, right? 
And uh, if we want to talk, we can talk after we finish all the questions. Okay, let's uh, move back to question number six. So again, we are trying to think about um, how to, oh, you want to answer this question? <laughs> yeah, um, you can type it to me, that's fine. But I'm also going to expand it to or other students left at the same time, okay? Okay, I see someone is typing their answer in the chat box. Yeah, thank you. But I we are going to show you how to do it. So again, as I said, we need to like connect them together. So this would be the easiest way you can think about. So you pass them together. So that would be and you pass the right side uh, together as well, which is Okay, so you got um, mm, x plus y plus z. This is 6,066. Okay, so that you got this stuff should be equal to, oops, sorry, should be equal to 3,033. Okay, so let's mark it down as this stuff here. Sorry, let me to rewrite my y here. Okay, so let's say this is our new equation, equation number two. So now we got equation number, uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> my wrong, equation number four. So now we can think about how equation number four connect with equation one, two, three. So um, let's say if we want to figure out x, what we can do for this step is to trying to use our new equation number four to minus our old equation number two, right? Um, we can write it down as this stuff. And this stuff, we know that, um, yes, only only got x left. And for the right side, we got, okay, so this is for x. So we are going to do the same thing for y and z, right? So this is y. So we are going to pick someone that we can figure out where is the y. So we are going to use this one. So we can write it down as in, we got x plus b, which is y, right? And for the right side, we got, yeah, here. So that is our y. And the last one, ooh, we're almost done. So let's repeat this step, which is x plus y, and that will be z. And for the right side, we got this stuff. So this is our z. Okay, cool. So also don't need, don't forget to verify it. So you can verify it anyway. Okay, so um, I'm going to skip this verify step because time is almost up and we got one question left. <laughs> sorry, sorry guys. And also, uh, let me check the chat box. Yeah, I see some of you got like different method, which is also good to do. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, I'm going to pause for you. Cool, let's challenge ourselves for this time. So for this time, after we finish our reading to these questions, we know that the question is asking that, what is the average of A, B, and C? The average of A, B, and C should be written in this form, right? So this is the question asking about. If we want to figure out this, we need to know this stuff, right? Okay, so let's try to mark it down what our information is doing here. So let's say um, we add them together. If we add them together, we got and right. So that is what we got for the left side. For the right side, that would be, ooh, 
Cool. So actually we can try to do this stuff, the C, B, and A, and this stuff here will be equal to how many? Nine, right? So, okay, let's try to move it to a kind of for a standard form. So we follow the sequence of these letters. That will be more clear for us. So this is nine. So we know that this is nine and we need to know the average. So, and this will be the average. So let's try to divide them by three. And it's three, right? So that means B would be our answer today. Okay, so I think that's almost all for today's questions. And we know about something about our um, two very basic method. And I can see um, some of you are typing in the chat box about how you did the equations differently. So yes, of course, equations can be solved in different methods. It all depends on your like habits, your um, favors, um, which one you want to do firstly, it's totally fine. But just make sure that you are going to do which step, this step, okay? You need to verify them to make sure you are getting things correctly. Okay, so that's all for today. And I'm going to stop share and stop record. Thank you.